I'm excited that we have um, uh, Mr. Deepak talk to us about Internet of Things. Um, and um, since we have started this November to remember, it's been such an exciting moment for me. I mean, we have the likes of um, Chidima. She spoke about CV and employable skills. We had um, Mr. Christopher, he spoke about business creativity. Jude spoke about uh, power of play and uh, Michael spoke about industry 5.0. Um, yesterday, uh, we had um, Mr. Paul collaboration and funding. Then on Monday, we had uh, machine learning. So. Honestly, I'm super excited because I know that um, I'll get a lot of um, something insightful from um, um, Internet of Things. So um, I don't know. I don't know if um, a lot of you here are excited as I am, Mr. <laughs> Dr. Celestine. <laughs> I know you're excited too. <laughs> I know you're excited. I mean, it's it's been, it's been um, I want to say thank you for um, giving us this opportunity to be part of this program. I mean, it's 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 a lot for me because I, I actually gained a lot the past few days. It's been amazing. So um, I don't know if my co-moderator is here. Um, Sam, are you here? Let me see if I can. Sam, okay, yeah. Hi, Sam. <laughs> okay, so um, my colleague and my co-moderator will be speaking on um, the bio data for uh, Mr. Deepak right now. He will put us through on um, his um, bio data. So um, over to you, Sam. Sam, we can't hear you. Um, that's the neighborhood. Um, today we'll be having um Deepak Rao. Deepak Rao is a pioneer in software wireless solution for mobile phones with a perfect blend of cutting edge technology and product development followed by innovations. Deepak is a fellow of RSA and fellow of Institution of Engineering in India. Deepak has been working on computer and programming since 1985 while studying in high school in 1985. Deepak started programming basic language on X, Z, ZX Spectrum Commodore 64 8-bit home computer for games and maths calculation. Deepak learned assembly language for Intel X 8035 8-bit microcontroller on IBM PC 8086. Deepak is a software technologist and an active software developer with a career spent building innovative software products at the intersection of hardware and software. Deepak is a programmer, a futurist, and an innovator skilled in translating ideas into innovations and products. More than two decades rich experience in visioning technology and a passion for scouting new technologies. He thinks in an innovative way about problems and issues and develop creative software solutions to a business problems. He is a pioneer in solutions for robotics, mobile internet, wireless communication, and smartphones. He has successfully seeded and managed several products and technology in initiatives from concepts to maturity, technologies with a record of success in R&D of new technologies driving from incubation to commercialization. He has over 25 years experience in IT as a product development consultant, product manager, technology evangelist, and is also a mentor. And his areas are smartphones, smartphones platform R&D, embedded system software, wireless communication, web, healthcare solutions, IoT, which is Internet of All Things, automotive, embedded system, connected cards, intelligent system, and variables. His key accomplishments are several world's first software technology solutions developed on mobile, wireless, and embedded system. Um, Ed and chief architect of Samsung, Bada Tizen, 
software platform and delivered Samsung smartphones. Um, delivery head of Samsung mobile platform R&D and is expert in um, programming languages such as C, C++, Java, Python, Perl, and JavaScript. This technology being used are mobile wireless network, mobile, mobile computing, mobile platform, networking, communications, mobile applications, embedded system software, automotive uh, connected car platforms, solutions, intelligent systems, uh, pervasive computing robotics, VR and AR. And he also attended uh, Mr. Bill Gates software talk on WinCE in Singapore in 1999. He's also on, okay, let's go. So that's, that's, that's all for today. Please thank you, Sam. Yeah, thank you, Sam, for that brief um, about data about um, Mr. Dupak. And um, I know I can I can't wait to listen. I, mean, I can't wait to hear back from him on what he has for us oh. today on the, the topic. So um, without wasting much time, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Dupak um, to the floor right now so that he can. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm Deepak here. Let me share my presentation. Okay. Uh, Dr. Celestine, are you sharing my slides? Hello. Should I stop sharing so that you can share? Yeah, I'm okay with this one because my, my laptop has some issue of sharing. That's okay. okay. Yeah, okay. So it's okay for me, okay. Okay, uh, thank you for this So I'm Deepak here. Uh, so I'm working in industry. Uh, basically I'm working as a consultant uh, for various uh, companies. Uh, basically I'm working from industry and my background is basically as I explained sometime back by Sam. So obviously I work mainly on the embedded systems, IoT systems and um, wireless technologies such as uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and many other nearby technologies like NFCs and so on. So in this presentation of uh, number two member series of talks, I'll be talking mainly on the general of things, advancement and future. So this is basically for the, uh, how the internet is going on for uh, next uh, five years or 10 years and so on. So this will cover basically the what is the what are the current technologies there in uh, IoT and what will be used in next five years and ten years and so on. So basically, I I will explain the state of art and and then I will uh, discuss about um, how these technologies can be used for the future generations. So I'm talking about just a short term. Uh, it could be five years to ten years and so on. So the IoT address, address yeah, uh, Celestine, can you go back to first slide, sir? I will talk about more details about this one. I may take some time on this, each of these slides. So IoT devices by 2030 is expected to be more than 29 billion. 
So this is the projection which is made by various uh, uh, statistics. So that means we have good opportunities to connect the various devices and use this data and provide various kind of insights and uh, future uh, dashboards for the various industries. It could be from um, healthcare, it could be for um, telematics, it could be for potential small users like uh, variable devices and so on. So that means the potential of using these billions of devices simultaneously is very big and data, big data is being generated from all these devices. So that means we should have the complete ecosystem from end to end to make sure these devices which are connected to internet and we can process those data and it can be stored on the cloud systems like Azure or any other system which is available to us. And we can use this data and intelligence we can provide to the end users. So that's all about the few applications of IoT. And we, of course we can have a good research on IoT technologies and we can develop many lot of applications and um, interesting uh, use cases can be provided for the end users. So end users could be uh, users like normal common users or it could be for the industry's purposes. For example, industry uh, like machines can be used within the organizations. And also there are a lot of uh, AR and VR technologies uh, for the immersive mixed reality applications are coming up and all these applications are being used using the IoT and related mobile technologies. And also, as I explained now, the images are emerging IoT based applications like non-invasive uh, body worn and implant devices also coming up. So that means various smaller sensors are being implanted on the body or external to body and it can be used for the uh, collection of data from the various environment, from the body itself, it could be from environment and so on. And it can be used, stored internally within a edge device and also it can be transferred to server. And once the data is transferred to server, it can be processed to provide the insights to the users. And also the, because of the recent technologies like 5G and so on, uh, it is made the uh, IoT uh, devices data communication faster and there'll be less latency so that this data can be gathered very fast and can stored on the edge or can be directly transferred to cloud and it can be processed on the cloud itself. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so coming to some of the recent technologies, which is there, like uh, what we term as human 4.0 and industry 4.0. So basically these are the technologies being used in, uh, in recently. Uh, basically the human for not for is basically it's a, a new generation of individuals which they deal with a smart connected devices, connected environment and collects the data and it can be used by the end users. And also it can be processed over the internet and it can be transferred to the cloud also. So human for not for means that all the humans are interacting with the real-time systems and mobile devices. It can be smaller devices, variable devices, sensors, and so on. And so that the intelligence around the human being can be collected and it can be transferred to the, uh, to the end users. And also it can be stored on the cloud itself. So that means the human are going to interact with, closely with the devices and machines ultimately. So it can be within for the uh, common users or it can be used within the industry itself. And also because uh, internet of uh, things are going towards the internet of everything. So that means everything will be connected and connected to the internet and data can be processed. So and this data is not just random data, it will be continuous of data will be trans collected from the devices and stored and transfer to the cloud. And also there is a possibility of real-time data transferring to the cloud. So that means our entire end-to-end -end system should be faster uh, by using technologies like 5G and data can be transferred ultimately to the cloud and intelligence can be extracted from the 
those data. So coming to industries uh, like um, uh, automations and um, uh, supply chain uh, systems. So basically we are, have a technology called Industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 is basically industrial revolution is go, going towards connectivity, automation, machine learning, and using of this big data in the industries. So that means all these industries are, be, are becoming from uh, uh, just a normal systems, a normal industries, machines to a smarter practice. So smarter practice means that that data of all the machines will be collected and processed and intelligences can be provided to the machines and so that they can automate and uh, use a technologies like uh, machine learning, their big data and connectivity and so on. So connectivity is the basic thing which is required for the industry 4.0 because this data which is coming from the industries, the machines are basically the real time data. So that means the data should be processed and should be uh, used for the other subsystems uh, so that the machines can be uh, work efficiently and it can be automated ultimately to the users. And also this makes the complete system as smart, smart factories. So smart factories means that the, the normal factories are converting to smarter factories. So that means the all the interactions and coordination between the human and machines going to happen in the future. So it's happening now, but in the you know, next five to 10 years, the close coordination of the machines and the human going to happen. So that means most of the work will be done by the machines rather by the humans. And next slides, please. Uh, so listening, uh, next slide. Okay, so let me talk about um, emerging uh, technologies, which is uh, coming in next five to 10 years. So this is a kind of short term to mid term uh, hype cycle. It is by Gartner. So if you see back uh, around 2020 and see the current technologies 2022 and next uh, 2025, uh, maybe 2030 around that time frame. So with the various technologies within that IoT is going very fast and innovation triggering is happening. So let's, if you see on the left side of the uh, IP cycle from Gartner uh, in 2020, um, MDM of the uh, things of data is coming up. Uh, it's It was projected to be innovated and innovation going to happen during that, uh, around that uh, area of technologies. And also this data will be used for governance so that means that this data can be used for any purpose within the uh, organizations for the uh, supply chains and uh, flow charts, framework of the different systems and so on. And also this IoT systems is not being just used as, as a, just a simple uh, sensors to collect the data, but also it is being used as a product as a service. So that means the complete system end to end as being used as a product or service. So that means that a decentive product can be used by the end users itself. And also because of the digital fin, so the data should be stored on the device itself and the same reflection of the data can be transferred to uh, cloud and that exact reflection of the data will be there on the cloud. So that means the user can see and interact and they can configure the data of the internet of things from the cloud itself and they can remotely monitor controlled IoT devices. So that's the purpose of digital twin. It's uh, of course it can be used for many different use cases but that's the basic feature of the uh, digital twin. And also because of recent uh, technologies coming up in the blockchain. So IoT and blockchain is going to innovate and there'll be a lot of innovations around blockchain connecting and using this blockchain by the IoT devices, uh, basically for the security, privacy and transactions and uh, for many other purposes can be used for the uh, blockchain by the IoT devices and systems. And also uh, IoT enabled applications, of course, I will discuss more about IoT enabled applications in the next few slides. Um, so it will be future of the things. So next five to 10 years, there will be a lot of IoT enabled applications can be used by the many users throughout the global. 
and also because the um, required a lot of uh, faster data trans uh, transfer and the processing of data of the IoT uh, systems. So we require the edge uh, computing. So edge computing is basically it's going to the uh, level we can have a lot of innovations around the edge computing. So edge computing is basically it is required that data can be stored locally uh, within the same uh, environment can be, for example, within the same organization, it could be used by the uh, within a home environment, for example, it would be processed within the uh, uh, same environment, uh, we are transferring that data to the cloud. So once the data is stored in the edge and processed and given the intelligence to the applications, IoT applications, uh, it can be transferred to the cloud and then the further advanced analytics and advanced processing of data can be done on the cloud side. So that's basically it's a edge analytics and edge computing. So those are the innovation it happened uh, as almost uh, past one or two years. But if you see uh, the current um, innovations, which is happening in 2022 and in the future, uh, five to two, five years and five to 10 years, I will discuss. Of course, we can discuss the future more. Um, up to 2020, but in this presentation, I'll be discussing about two to five years and five to 10 years of projection of kind of uh, IoT technologies. As I explained, the digital twin is coming soon and it will be applied all to all the IoT devices. And also the open telemetry. So open telemetry is basically it's kind of open up. Uh, APS will be provided so that it will be open to everyone. Uh, to use this IoT applications and devices. So that means each devices or each sensors can provide an open APS so that the, any uh, anyone can develop the uh, IoT applications. So that's all purpose of the open telemetry means. So that is where the innovation is happening now. So ne next five to 10 years, we can expect a lot of innovation going around that area. So that means we have a lot of op opportunities to research on uh, open telemetry. Of course, can be used for telematics and, for example, uh, autonomous vehicles. It can be used for the connected devices and so on. And also, if you see the web 3.0, it's happening soon. It's it's already there now also. And also, uh, as I explained some time back, so IoT and blockchain will be used uh, more uh, closely rather depending on the cloud side for the privacy, security, transaction purposes, because it is a more secure, it is immutable, and it can be used for many other applications also. And also, as I explained, the human 4.1, industry 4.4, the digital humans are going to have a lot of applications. So digital human, basically, it means that the systems will behave like almost like intelligent systems and it will be privacy and ubiquitous. Uh, next slides, please. Okay, so let me talk about the IoT analytics. So because just using the IoT device and storing the data may not be useful, right? So ultimately the user requests the applications and usage of these IoT uh, systems ultimately to the end uh, scenarios and use cases. So we require a lot of uh, connectivity, which I explained some time back. And ultimately, after connectivity is done, we require the cloud system. And the cloud system should provide the data analytics. Of course, the analytics can be done on the edge side, but I'm talking more about the cloud analytics. So the cloud analytics is required because this big data coming from the various sensors and IoT systems, we, we need to require to process this data under real time and also this big data stored on the cloud should be processed and give the insights and intelligence to the business intelligence to the users. So that's the purpose of uh, cloud an uh, analytics. So because once we have the analytics, we require the, some kind of uh, technology, for example, um, AI and ML cloud technology so will be required and should be applied. So various AI and ML algorithms will be applied for the data analytics to provide the insights and intelligence. 
So if you see on the left side, uh, what makes the IoT uh, analytics different? So basically the IoT analytics is very different compared to that data which is coming from uh, internally, like for example, enterprise data. So which is entirely different because the IoT data is basically the uh, continuous data, it's a real-time data and it's a high volume of data because the sensors, whatever it sends the data to the cloud, it's uh, gigabyte of data will be transferred and uh, various sensors can give data, for example, every millisecond, every second, every nanosecond of data can be transferred to the cloud at the latency of depending on the wireless technologies being used in the IoT systems. So that means all this data should be stored and continuously it should be processed on the real time. And of course, we can use the real time queries, SQL queries, so that the data can be processed or as the data comes in and it can be provided uh, feedback, notifications, and other kind of intelligence can be given to the users. So once this data is processed and stored, the processing is the pre-processing I'm talking about. So once the data is pre-processed and stored in the database, basically in the cloud system, so it, uh, we can use a lot of data analytics um, technologies like uh, applied technologies like uh, AI and ML algorithms, and we can provide the uh, kind of intelligence to the users in a kind of dashboards and so on. And one of the most important thing for the IoT analytics is basically uh, we should provide the cybersecurity because without cybersecurity, all these devices will be insecure and we cannot process the data which comes from the IoT systems. And also the most important thing of uh, IoT analytics to provide a business intelligence, which is required for the industry is basically the data quality and data diversity. So data quality means that data should be high quality and should not have any noise kind of thing so that the data may not be useful once they're processed and given the intelligence to the users. Because without having a good data, we cannot provide the intelligence to the users. So if you see on the right side of the diagram, so it is a, it's a industry's system. Basically it is from a company called Tipco. I just given a architecture how the IoT analytics can be used uh, of course, there are many other systems like uh, IoT Azure, IoT AWS, and so on. But let me explain um, a common IoT architecture, uh, which is uh, where, which is basically used by the many industries uh, for the data processing, which is coming from IoT systems. Now, external data, which is coming from the various sensors, the social data, it can be Facebook, WhatsApp, and many other data will, can be processed from the um, cloud analytics and IoT analytics systems. And also machine data, for example, industries, food output data, and raw data from coming from the various sensors, the basic sensors, which is there in IoT systems can be processed. And it will be integrated with the cloud through the various protocols like MQTT and so on. So those protocols will enable that data transfer to the cloud system and the cloud system can do the analytics on the real time and also it can be stored and can do the historical data uh, processing and analytics purpose. So there's two ways of for data processing, right? One is basically the real time processing and other one is the store and process that data. So all this data which I'm talking about is a big data. So that means a lot of processing going up and on the cloud side. On the cloud side, if you see internal, how the data will be processed, basically it, it will have a lot of rules, aggregation should be done, and the correlation of data should be done, and a lot of transactions can be done. Of course, that this transaction can be stored on the blockchain, and it can be used for any other purpose, uh, and also internally can be processed and can be stored on the cloud itself, so depending on the applications being used. So there are three phases of the IoT analytics, First is the data collection from the IoT systems and data analysis is the next phase of the IoT system which requires stru structuring of the data. Basically, the data can be now unstructured and structured data, right? So basically that means we need to structure the data so the cloud system can be processed and can be stored and further analysis can be done on the cloud side. So once the processing is, has been done, actionable insights can be extracted from the cloud 
uh, data, big data, which is stored and it can be deployed for the end users in a form of data visualization dashboards and various kind of notifications and so on. That is basically the applications of the uh, data visualization of this big data. And also all these technologies request the ML and AI technology. We thought that one it's very difficult to predict and give the descriptive analytics in the systems. Our next slide, please. Okay, so let me talk about the edge computing. So, so I have just discussed about the cloud computing. So let me talk about a different kind of environment and different kind of architecture, which is required for the IoT system is basically the edge computing. So edge computing is basically to process the data locally. So that means near to IoT devices, the edge computing will be done, which is much faster to process the data and much easier to process the data and faster response can be given to the applications instead of transferring the data to cloud and then processing on the cloud. It may take a lot of time, right? Depending on the latency of the network, which is being used in the systems. So that is why we require a edge computing to process the data locally and can be used efficiently by the various Internet of Things applications. And this also it will eliminate the latency issue uh, because depending on the uh, uh, technologies, wireless technologies being used, uh, there will be a lot of network latency. So I think we should uh, avoid that kind of latencies so that the data can be processed and provide the local intelligence to the users. So this this will be very useful to the end applications being used by the applicant by the users. So the edge computing, for example, so if the user is using a, a variable device, so it's not really required to data to be transferred to the cloud and cloud will give the intelligence and it may take a uh, lot of time to give the intel intelligence to the users, right? So that's why we require the edge, edge uh, computing so that uh, data can be processed locally. Like for example, the use case could be a uh, warm environment. So they say uh, within a warm, a lot of devices are connected to the um, edge computing device. Data, data can be processed within the edge computing uh, device and can data applications intelligence can be given today on the mobile apps or maybe any other applications. So those are the things is happening now because always the IoT devices cannot be connected to the cloud. We should connect it to smaller systems and smaller devices like edge devices. And also the edge computing has a lot of applications for autonomous vehicles, the predictive maintenance, the predictive maintenance basically could be for the industry itself. How we can predict the data and um, using the AI and ML algorithms and provide a better intelligence to the uh, end customers. Also, for example, as I explained for the home environment, it could be environment like uh, patient monitoring. Right. So for the patient monitoring, the users are expecting that data and intelligence much faster instead of connecting to the cloud and getting the data process on the cloud and uh, re uh, give the response to the end applications. It may take a lot of time. So the patient monitoring is basically it's a real-time real systems which request the faster processing of the data and storing of minimal of data on the edge computing and processing and storage and giving them a lot of intelligence to the patients, for example, for the home monitoring purpose, the patient monitoring within a home. And also we can use for the remote monitoring for equipment in the industry also. And also because these edge systems and edge devices are connected to IoT systems, that means these edge systems are basically the distributed systems. It is not, it is placed in one cloud system. For example, it's not placed in Azure, or maybe in the AWS cloud uh, systems, but it will be distributed in the various uh, environments. For example, distributed systems means that it can be in the various homes like this edge devices. So that means it's all connected within the uh, home systems and this, all the edge devices will, can be interconnected and ultimately to the cloud also. 
So benefits of the edge computing is basically boosts the um, performance of the system, as I explained, and also it's a real-time data processing analysis can be done, a much faster decision can be done. And also because uh, there are a lot of concerns of using and storing of data on the cloud, um, we can add the edge computing for the privacy protection and data security. So that means the data is stored locally within the same environment wherein the users are being used that data and wherein the IoT systems exist. So that means that there'll be less privacy concern and higher data security. Now also it reduces the operational cost because it is connected to the smaller systems because the cloud system to use and connected to a cloud system, it's higher cost to the end users. The challenges of edge computing is basically proximity um, because as the data and number of IoT devices increases, we require a bigger IoT systems and IoT edge devices. Also the data latency also will uh, increase us. So next slide, please. So let me talk about the IoT attacks. As there are millions of devices are there in the environment and it is being used in the industry, it is being used, used in uh, home automation, home environment and many other uh, systems. Um, obviously there'll be inter uh, attacks from the internet because it's a uh, devices are connected to internet and anyone can should be able to access um, because using um, any technologies which is exist today. So that means the IoT attacks will be common and it will increase uh, very soon. So if you see the past data and uh, the most act devices, so 47 percentage of camera system has been act so far and it is accessed by the hackers remotely. And the next system is with the smart ups like for the WOMP environment. So that means the attackers are basically accessing the WOMP ups and uh, getting the data from the WOMP systems, IoT system and devices. And um, that is why we should provide the uh, internet of things security for the smaller devices also. It is not only really just uh, providing technologies like uh, TSL or SSL technologies, there are many other technologies will be required to provide a secure IoT connections to the cloud and secure connection to the even to the edge devices also. And also there'll be a lot of proxy devices will be connected between the IoT devices and the cloud. So we should have the again the security at the level of gateway systems on the server side and so that it will be more secure and um, data can be transferred between the IoT systems to the ODA to the cloud ultimately. And also the hackers are taking over the IoT devices as I explained, for example, uh, hackers can take over the security cameras and uh, they can do anything once the access is uh, taken over by the hackers, right? And also there'll be a lot of distributed denial of service attacks other in, uh, vulnerabilities can happen. There'll, there'll be botnets and malware and so on. So this will uh, disturb the complete IoT ecosystems. So for example, if there's an attack on the industry systems, the, the machines can disturb the complete automations of the uh, systems, right? So for example, actuators or sensors are the, uh, the, all the interconnected systems in the industry for dot post systems automation may disturbed and uh, it will be uh, to, uh, it will be too much problem within the automation for a whole process the complete entire process can get disturbed and uh, next slide please okay so let me talk about some of the applications which can be applied for uh, for the various uh, use cases so one of the interesting use cases for IoT is basically the applying uh, IoT technologies and systems for the smart cities. So smart cities are there in many of the uh, many of the places throughout the global 
but let me talk about what kind of applications can be developed for these smart cities. So when we say this smart city is a complete ecosystem, so it can be within a small city, it can be bigger cities. So there'll be a lot of applications and usage of IoT uh, can, be, you, uh, can be used by the users uh, by using uh, interconnected IoT systems. So one of the applications could be like, for example, it's not just home monitoring, it can be used as a smart home purpose. So that means all the homes within that city, it will become a smart home and interconnected. And finally, it could be interconnected to the edge and ultimately to the cloud. Uh, but uh, it will be mainly interconnected to the edge first because we should provide the intelligence to the home users. And also similar kind of applications like uh, smart buildings itself. The big buildings as various IoT devices and sensors connected and can be remotely monitored, controlled, and provide the better intelligence to the uh, users within the same building. And these buildings can be interconnected and can be uh, monitored remotely uh, by the control systems. Another use case of these smart cities is basically the public safety. So various sensors distributed in the environment, for example, it can be uh, roads and the lights and so on. Um, the public safety cameras can be installed and can be monitored remotely and provide the public safety to the uh, people who drives the vehicles and so on. And also similar kind of applications also can be applied for the uh, gas, water and leakage detections. Uh, Dr. Salishtin, can you go back to the uh, previous slide? Okay, uh, so I was just explaining about the, some of the applications for required for this smart city. So coming back to uh, gas, water, and leakage detection, again, these very sensors can be uh, installed in various homes and can be remotely monitored. Uh, there is... Okay. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of line noise. Okay, uh, so let me explain some of the other applications required for these smart cities. And one of the applications can be, uh, for example, air pollution. How do we monitor the air pollution of these cities, of the smart city? How, how the uh, uh, pollution can be decreased by um, analysis and uh, data analytics on the cloud side? And also we can predict what kind of pollution levels will be there next uh, uh, seven days or 10 days and so on. So this prediction can be done by collecting data from the various places and can be used for the monitoring of the pollution of, of the cities, various cities. And also this data also can be opened as a open data. So open data means that uh, and this kind of uh, data which we collect from the pollution the environment, uh, gas, water, leakage, detection and uh, smart city um, lighting and so on. This data can be stored on the cloud and this data can be given as um, as a open data. Obviously, open data means that a various set of applications can be open to the users and developers can develop the various applications to the users so that uh, this data can be used intelligently and provide a better use cases for the uh, users within the same cities. So that is what it's happening now. Our open data is very much useful because we cannot develop depending on the one organization or same enterprise to develop the various applications. So once we have the open data uh, stored on the cloud and expose the applications, uh, data uh, API calls, uh, the API calls can be used and the various kind of mobile applications for the users. And next slide. 
Okay, uh, so as I explained for the smart cities, there are various applications, right? Uh, smart traffic uh, monitoring, light, um, uh, traffic light monitoring control, and so on, pedestrian monitoring, safety of the drivers, transportation, and reducing the pollution, and improving the air quality, and so on. So all this requires the AI and ML algorithms on the cloud, because this big, big data which we collect from the smart cities is required to be analyzed and provide there were a lot of intelligence and insights to the users. So this requires the AI and ML algorithms. So that means we have a lot of opportunities for the research uh, to conduct uh, using AI and ML algorithms, how these algorithms can be applied on the smart cities data and how it can be intelligent and can be used by these systems. And also as I explained, so various 5G technologies and various low powered wide area network technologies will be required uh, to provide the smart city applications because just using the 5G may not be useful, much useful. We need to provide a low powered wide area network for the small, uh, for example, for the traffic lights, for the street light monitoring and many other applications. Yeah, uh, next slide. Okay, so let me explain uh, other use cases of uh, of IoT applications, and also from the perspective of privacy and security. So IoT with the blockchain is coming up soon, and people have started to use the block tech, uh, blockchain technology uh, for the security and privacy purposes. And also the, because uh, IoT devices involves a lot of transactions and transactions should be stored securely. We should use the IOA blockchain, which is more secure by design, and it can be virtually it's act proof because the, once the blockchain is um, updated, we cannot modify uh, blockchain data information, which is there in the, within the blockchain of uh, systems. So one of the benefit of using the blockchain with IOT is that every record of um, transaction can be stored uh, securely and on the blockchain and to be used by the other systems involved in the um, IoT ecosystems. And because of uh, convergence of blockchain, IoT and AI, this will uh, this will uh, make a bigger business models and we can have a lot of research involving interacting and interconnecting with the and usage of the blockchain for the IoT and using the AI technology for the intelligent and processing of the data for the various applications. So this convergence also will drive the development of autonomous business models and digital transformations. So that means once we have the integ integrated systems of IoT with blockchain and the AI uh, algorithms, we can provide the autonomous business models and, and a complete digital transformation within the enterprise is possible. So that means a complete uh, an enterprise can have the complete digital transformation by using this um, blockchain technologies and IoT technologies. And also uh, this IoT and blockchain can be used by insurance supply chain logistics also because one of the useful of the blockchain in the insurance um, business is that basically the transaction can be stored securely in the blockchain and cannot be modifiable. And so that uh, all the processing of insurance data and big data can be secure and privacy can be protected of the end users. Yeah, next slide. Okay, so let's talk about more about how the blockchain and IoT can be used. So for example, if you see in the uh, diagram, so then we can have the IoT-IoT inter interactions. So that means the various sensors within IoT systems will interact with the uh, blockchain to secure data storage and transaction purpose. And also the IoT blocks blockchain can be interacted. It can be various systems like industry systems, telematics, autonomous vehicles, and so on, and various sensors also. That means various sensors can use the blockchain to store the data. And finally, this data can be transferred to the cloud and it can be processed ultimately to provide the intelligence and dashboards. And also there's be 
uh, approach like hybrid approach. So the blockchain interactions within uh, and the blockchain interacting with the IoT systems and then for and then ultimately to the cloud. So and also it can interact, IoT systems can interact with the edge and with the cloud and ultimately to the uh, blockchain or within the edge systems also we can provide the blockchain information. So one of the three benefits of the using the IoT and the blockchain is basically to build a trust because it is a more secure and privacy can be preserved and it reduces the cost and accelerate the transactions. So one of the requirement of the IoT system is that the transaction should be faster, should be secure and more number of transactions should be possible to store and retrieve the transactions back, right? So that's why we should provide the uh, blockchain internet uh, integration with the IoT systems so that we can accelerate the transactions and which reduces ultimately in the cost to the enterprise. Next slide. Also the usage of the blockchain is basically the authentication and privacy purposes. The blockchain can be applied to authenticate IoT network of uh, devices and participants of the IoT ecosystems. And because authentication is one of the most critical for the security, because without authentication and control systems, it's very difficult to provide the secure IoT systems for the users. And because the basic technology of the blockchain is basically the smart contract and can be used between agreement between the two entities. The two entities could be IoT systems, IoT devices to individuals and so on. Uh, the, uh, was participating in the IoT ecosystems can be agreed and smart contract can be uh, executed. So which is basically the precondition which is required for the blockchain and the um, IoT systems. So one of the use case could be, for example, uh, let me take an example of using a blockchain for the smart city. So let's say there is a smart uh, street light is there and blockchain technology can be used for identity operations and controlling of this smart uh, street light using a smart contract. So that means once the smart contract is executed using the blockchain uh, by uh, using some micropayment systems, the lamp can be triggered. So that means automatically the lamp can be triggered of the street light and once the smart contract is executed. So that means it will become a, a kind of smart contract execution purpose. So this complete ecosystem, for example, if you provide for all the users uh, for the street light controlling and mineral controlling, for, for example, uh, we can provide a complete uh, smart city ecosystem for the users. So this is one of the usage and applications of the blockchain for the IoT systems. Next slide. Okay, so let me talk about uh, some more use cases and applications of the IoT and where we have the opportunities for the research and development of the various applications and how the IoT data can be used. So one of the major applications of the IoT is basically um, IoT, uh, bioinformatics and biotechnology. So bioinformatics and biotechnology is coming up soon because we are collecting a lot of data from the healthcare systems. So that means we are not just collecting the and monitoring the patient data, we are collecting the DNA data and the data can be processed and can be used for the various applications for the DNA sequence analysis and so on. So this in bioinformatics data and biotechnology will be very much useful um, when we use the IoT uh, uh, systems in our medicines and uh, healthcare monitoring. Because currently what we have is basically the just healthcare monitoring for the home environment. But we, if we apply this technology of IoT for the bioinformatics and biotechnology, the big data which is coming from the um, various DNA sequence data and bioinformatics data can be processed on the real time and provide the lot of intelligence to the end customers and within an enterprise for the hospital management purposes. 
and this data, this bioinformatics context data is basically multidimensional and dynamic. Because, and also there's a various level of uh, complexities involved. Uh, it is not as um, simple as like um, structured data, unstructured data. It's a very complex data, which is coming from the bioinformatics and biotechnologies devices, because this data is very difficult to manage and collect the data because once the data is lost, uh, we cannot collect back once again from the bioinformatics devices and medical data. So it will be, we need to collect the data uh, without losing those data coming from the various systems and can be processed on the real time. So this requires the uh, real time computing using IoT systems. So why it, IoT is required is that this bioinformatics systems and the devices, the medical devices, are connected to the various sensors devices to collect the environment data and various data sensing, right? So this data should be collected and stored within the edge, or maybe ultimately it should be transferred to the cloud so that the big data which is coming from the all this bioinformatics data and the medical devices should, can be processed and provide the, a lot of uh, uh, applications like DNA sequence analysis and so on. And protein data, for example, this protein data, which is analyzed by the, collected by the medical devices are basically this very big data. So each protein data will have very big data for, and it has to be processed. So all this pro protein data and gene sequencing should be processed securely because this data is privacy to the users. It cannot be um, stored on the cloud. So that means should be stored securely and using various technologies, which I explained just now. So next slide. So these are the applications and usage of the IoT uh, so far. Of course, there may IoT also can be applied for the various applications, but I given very basic and varying uh, research and development opportunities are there for the next uh, five to 10 years. So wherein we can apply these uh, technologies and all the various applications and technologies for the end users. So let me talk about the um, career in IoT technology and how the users, uh, maybe professionals can be um, use this IoT technologies and can work in IoT ecosystems. So IoT is revolutionizing every industry and being applied for the home applications to agriculture, to the space explorations. So that means there's everywhere IoT applications are there and every there's a lot of opportunities to work in IoT uh, technology. So that means we have a lot of jobs available and uh, there a lot of jobs will be coming in the next five to 10 years. There'll be a lot of opportunities for the IoT professionals. And as engineers, we can uh, work on various technologies and we can develop the various uh, solutions and services for the end custom, uh, customers and enterprises. So the solutions could be for the engineering purpose. It can be um, home users and it can be used for the uh, industry 4.0 and also it can be applied for the human 4.0 also. So there are two opportunities uh, to work in IoT technology. One is basically the development and testing and next opportunity is basically uh, research in IoT. So let me talk about the development of technology which is required for the enterprise and industry. So developing uh, an IoT device and products requires hardware designing, hardware testing and integration of hardware with a firmware. So basically the sensors are basically it's hardware, right? So these sensors, we need to develop uh, firmware to collect the data and store the data and process for that. So that means we require the software also, the software and firmware required to collect the data, raw sensors data and process it. So that means there are a lot of opportunities to work in various industries uh, to develop this kind of uh, hardware designs, hardware testing and integrating the both software and hardware systems to make complete solutions. Okay, let me talk about the some of the research opportunities uh, available for us for in the next five to ten years. Um, IoT and blockchain, as I explained, there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of research will be required uh, for the blockchain uh, and using uh, applying on the IoT. 
and IoT privacy so it will be our topic and our research topic for the data protection and the, because there are a lot of security concerns is coming up for the IoT systems. And uh, green IoT, so basically once as we have a lot of IoT devices like uh, it is projected 2020, there'll be 29 billion of devices, IoT devices will be there. So that means green IoT will be, so that means we need to reduce the carbon emission and so that will be useful for the users in the ecosystems because we should as much as re, um, reduce the carbon emission from all these devices. Also because we require the secure um, transaction between IoT systems, uh, we should develop um, security standards for the IoT systems. So basically the security standards requires a lot of research and coming up with the various advanced standards so that the hackers cannot act the IoT systems. And also, for example, and the users like uh, home environment and some smart cities, health monitoring and telematics and so on requires ambient intelligence. So that means users are not just collecting the data and wants to see the data what IoT provides, but we need to provide ambient intelligence and intelligent applications and data. So how do we develop the intelligence and applications? Those are the major research area. We need to work and develop kind of research area and come up with various solutions, algorithms for intelligently to collect various data coming from that data, from the IoT devices. And IoT metaverse is another hot topic coming up. So next, Five years definitely will be our topic for research for them using a metaverse, uh, using a technology like ER and VR, which makes the uh, interaction with the IoT systems uh, very intelligently and more usefulness of the IoT devices can be taken for if we use the metaverse technologies. And this requires the graphics and visualization of technologies and various camera technologies will be useful and we need to develop a lot of technologies. Uh, how do we process efficiently the data coming from the camera and ER and VR systems? So that means this will enable the metaverse ultimately. Other kind of technologies which I not discussed so far, but let me highlight which is the, which which we require the lot of research is basically the oceans uh, IoT. So that means this is basically this technology will be required for climate and ecological monitoring and agricultural purposes, wherein we can use the miniature robotics navigation systems. We can monitor the oceans, we can collect the data from the ocean data, and we can predict the climate and ecological monitoring can be done. So this is one of the area of research will be required ultimately for the ecosystem of the world. So similarly, we have the lot of research will be required for the IoT uh, in uh, agriculture, purposes because it is not just monitoring of data which is coming from the data from the agricultural systems we need to provide a lot of intelligent and useful use cases for the uh, people are using for the agriculture so that means we provide a lot of we need we need a lot of uh, research in in the area of agriculture the last and uh, um, one of the most interesting area of uh, research are basically the internet of biological and bio-inspired things. So that means all the smaller systems, biological systems will become internet of biological and bio-inspired things. So it is coming up soon and this will be one of the hot topic for the research and we need to a lot of research, we need to do it. And uh, of, of course this can be used for the bioinformatics and biotechnology also. So that means the biological systems also will become like uh, biological IoT systems. So like a sensor systems, which collects the data and provides the data for the healthcare and medical purposes. Yeah, next slide. Okay, so in this presentation, I talk about more about the IoT applications, what will be the future for next uh, five to 10 years. And I given a, where IoT um, career is there and where are the research opportunities are there for us to research and come up with the various technologies and papers publications can be done. So any questions?
on this topic for me. Thank you very much, Mr. Deepak. That was quite insightful. Um, okay, um, I have a question. Um, I want to know the difference between IoT and AR. I don't know if they're related or they work hand in hand or there's a specific difference between them. Okay, uh, so AR is augmented reality. Augmented reality is a device. So basically it uses the camera and visualizes the data, real and virtual data. Okay, what that data we are seeing here, okay, and it will be overlapped with the virtual data. Virtual data can be captured from the camera and we provide a mixed reality and virtual reality, right? So that is the augmented reality means. Augmented means that we are superimposing the um, virtual data on the real data. So that's the uh, ER technology. So basically it uses the camera and a lot of graphics and uh, visualization of data so that the user can interact with the real systems and also it, uh, user can interact with the virtual systems also. So virtual system can be captured from the camera and user is interacting on the real systems. So one of the apl application of the ER is basically on the medical surgery. So for example, a surgeon is uh, doing uh, surgery on a patient Okay, so you seeing the data. So real uh, real data you seeing real you uh, seeing the real world, right? And you want to uh, refer some kind of data which is required for conducting the surgery of that patient, right? So you want to refer some book, for example, you want to refer some uh, some information how we can do the surgery better. So in that case, the uh, virtual data will be superimposed on the real data and uh, the, um, the surgeon can see the uh, virtual data under real data and he can do the better surgery and successful surgery. That's one of the application of the ER. Okay, thank you very much. Um, does okay, anyone so, have... okay, coming to IoT. IoT is basically the collection of data. IoT is basically the ecosystem. It's a complete system as such, okay? So IoT is basically the collection of data from the various sensors, storing of data, transferring the data to the cloud, analyzing of data. This end-to-end -end system is called basically the IoT. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I don't know if anyone has a question. Um, I have questions to ask. Um... Um, um, Deepak, what's the difference between um, IoT and IIoT, industrial okay. internet of things? Okay, so it's a good question. So IoT is basically the very general term, superset. IoT is basically, it can be used for the blockchain, it can be used, <laughs> it can be used for the home monitoring, it can be used for the patient monitoring, it can be used for tel telematic autonomous vehicles and so on. I, IOT is basically the industrial IOT. So it, I, industrial IOT is basically it is applied for only for the industry purpose. So for the automation of the uh, industrial processes. So for example, they say machines are running in, uh, in um, industry. So for example, that machine will do complete processing of the plastic material. So let's say, for, for example, the, we put a plastic material, raw materials, it okay. processes the plastic and does the uh, complete uh, plastic processing and ultimately it will provide some plastic material, right? So let's assume a PVC material, okay? That's the machine it does. So for this processing of this data, we should have the sensors installed on the machines so then we can, uh, users can collect that data and efficiently process this end-to-end -end, uh, process of this automation of the plastic producing machine, the product coming from this machine. So it can be processed efficiently and also it can be monitored remotely and to produce the high quality products. So for this one, we require to install a lot of sensors to monitor this data. Like for example, how much, what is the thickness of that data? How yeah, out of this temperature of this liquid of the plastic material and so on, those sensors. So the data collecting from the industrial systems are basically, it is called IIoT systems. It's so industrial systems. And it can be connected to SCADA. SCADA is basically the PLC. PLC, PLC is basically the programmable logic uh, controller systems, wherein all the data will be collected 
and stored in the control systems and then process ultimately on the computer and on the cloud and for the dashboards that are users to monitor the complete end-to-end -end processes. Okay. Um, can I ask Okay. Any other questions for anyone else? <laughs> I have one question left. Um, what will happen in terms of jobs, loses, and um, skills? As IoT makes devices and robots more intelligent, what will happen in terms of job loses and skills loses? Okay, so there are many technologies I explained. And there'll be nearby technologies like Blue, BT, Bluetooth, for example, near field communications and so on. Also there are far field communication, wide area network, for example, 5G, and uh, Wi-Fi and basically it's in uh, nearby and uh, wide area networks, right? So all these wireless technologies uh, may not be secure. Of course, there are various secure technologies has been provided, for example, using SSL technology, uh, which provides the secure internet communication between IoT systems and the cloud. So even though if we provide a SSL or any other cloud technologies, Still, the connection between the IoT and the cloud systems are not secure. It can be act, right? And once we have the nearby field as much as possible, so we cannot hacker cannot act the systems because it's a nearby within a hundred feet or uh, hundred meter and so on. It will be nearby. It cannot be act. But if the wireless technology is is a wide area networks, for example, five G technology is being used the data transfer from the IoT systems to the cloud, then the hacking and such kind of security risk vulnerabilities will come to the picture. So it's all depend on the, what kind of wireless technology is being used between IoT sensors, systems, edge devices and the cloud. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Deepak. Um, I don't know, Mr. Celestine, Dr. Celestine, over to you, sir. We can hear you, sir. Dr. Celestin, do you have any questions? All right. All right. Okay. okay. I'm trying to control the echo here. Thank you so much, uh, Deepak, for this insightful um, lecture. It's, it was so deep. It was so deep. And uh, you know, it's only those who have water in them that knows the color of the sea. You know, so we understand when you talk of IoT. And then for people like us, that is our area. The good thing is that you have expanded this to our students because most of them are research based, especially you have given them things that will help them to concentrate on their research and also in terms of future, what they need to do. So we really appreciate you. We have run out of time. So I need to give you, uh, present something to you to thank you for coming. Our head of school would have been here, but she's unavoidably absent. So we just need to appreciate you with what we always have um, to thank you for coming. So can everybody see this? Okay. Okay. Oh, you. <laughs> Let me come back again. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, let me make it uh, big. So thank you so much for coming. This is from uh, November to Remember series of talks from University of Bolton. We appreciate you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks to all the students and the, the students that are here. Can everybody say hello? So hello. You have, hello. You have, hello. Have, have a whole load of crowd here. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we appreciate you again. We appreciate you again uh, for coming. Thank you very much. You know, thank you very much. Thank you all. And uh, hope to see you again next week in our November to remember. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for inviting yes. me. Thank you, Dr. Celestine. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.